Hello there, my Teach Meet friends. It's good to be with you. This is actually recording, so uh, thank you for uh, putting up with me recording stuff and sending it to you to watch this way. Um, the, the title of my session is deliberately provocative. So the idea of my session is the idea that we should all give up teaching forever. <laughs> oh, I can't remember exactly how I worded it was this session, but it's that sort of notion. So obviously there, there's some provocation intended within that, but it's meant in a kind of a, a caring and compassionate way. We as a business and me as an individual, we value massively the role of a teacher in the classroom. We get accused actually quite regularly, almost daily, that we're trying to replace the teacher because of the work that we do. And it's utterly untrue. We we actually want to see a scenario where, um, not, not a scenario where we sort of guard and we stick to what the teacher's role has traditionally been. But we find a scenario where actually the teacher's role is elevated and is moved into a new area of skill set, behavior, um, and technique which is more relevant to the way human beings actually learn and is more relevant to actually creating a team of people, students and teachers on one side of the same team working together to achieve genuine productivity of knowledge, skills and behaviours in the learning of young people and of course in teachers as well. So we're trying to format a structure in which that can be the case. I'm going to try and explain some concepts within that to you today but I want to be clear here that the last time that I taught at the front of a classroom in some kind of presentational PowerPoint GCCA level kind of theory context was five years ago. So five years free of that discipline and that behaviour have I been and it's absolutely possible to achieve. So we see almost like a tyranny of the assumption that the role of a teacher is to be at the front of the class delivering, pouring information into the minds of young people from some kind of presentational tool. And we're here really to try and challenge that idea and I'm going to go about trying to do that. So the provo the provocative can't say it the provocative title is intended to get that point across it's not that we want to destroy the teaching profession it's not the, but equally the last thing we want to do is to keep the teaching profession suppressed where it is right now we want to release the teaching profession to be what it truly can be and we're hopefully going to try and be to be able to promote some of those ideas to you right now the first thing I want to do just in case you wonder what the hell I'm banging on about um, I'm just going to show you just a probably just a few seconds clip of one of the experiences where I've given up teaching at the front of the classroom and I've replaced it with exactly the same teaching that I've provided to my students but I've provided it in a reviewable and repetitive format that the students can take whenever they want to take it not when I insist that I'm about to teach and ready to go so they have to learn at that moment so what I'll do is I'll do that right now you'll hear that uh, you'll see and hear that little bit of recording going on and then I'll come back onto the screen and talk to you a bit more about it my elements they have like little golf ball uh, sorry golf club structures like this these myosin heads they're called okay and they go and they attach to the actin, or at least they want to attack, attach to the actin. So I'll do it the same on this side as well. Now I wonder if you can immediately get an intuition as to what these little arms are for. And if your brain sort of telling, well, they look like they're going to kind of pull or row their way up the cell, you'd be absolutely right. Because of course, what we're going to see in a moment is that when we have uh, the presence of ATP and when the cell is what we call depolarized, then what we find is that the, uh, the muscle constricts inwards or contracts inwards. And it's these little arms that pull on the actin to shorten everything up. So we, I just want you to have an intuition for that before we look at the main bit of theory here. So we've invested quite a bit of time in that. And I realize what I've drawn here and you've got to draw it, right? You lot get drawing. Um, <laughs> what we've got here is not a very impressive drawing, but what I want you to realize is that this is meant to be an actin filament. So realize that I have taken, let me just take you back up. I have taken one, let's say it's this one, I've taken one of these lines here, okay, and I have drawn it out. I've drawn it out down here. So we have one actin filament. It's sort of like a little wavy loopy line. We depicted it as a straight line up above. That's kind of a bit confusing, but no, it's got a bit of a loopiness to it. A couple of terminologies I'd like you to be aware of. When we make the connection between the myosin and the actin, we call this a cross bridge. 
Okay, so the word bridge, I think, will make sense in this uh, particular situation. We call that a cross bridge. So that's what muscular contraction is aiming to achieve. We can also say that when the myosin pulls against the actin, it's what we call the power stroke. Okay, so think of it almost like a rowing oar pulling against the water, a rowing oar pulling here against the actin, and it, um, it pulls in the direction of muscular contraction. And finally, we also need the presence of ATP. Okay, so we've looked at ATP, and we can now just at least have a conceptualization of the fact that we have an ATP molecule present within this action and we see now why ATP is so important for muscular contraction it's the only utilizable so energy. You can see I've been daft enough to put all my teaching online uh, we, we now have well over 2,000 videos of that type of nature which are provided for both teachers uh, sort of both students and for teachers so first of all students can self-pace their learning I want to state a really clear difference from that first of all that is to say that they get the same teaching at a point when they decide they are ready to start that teaching and therefore they're learning. Secondly, it's completely democratized. I might teach that concept on sliding filament. I might teach that in, I don't know, October of the year that we're doing the course. And then I, can, I won't cover it again until maybe we do it for revision towards the end before the exam. In this model, if the student doesn't master that content in the time that's been allotted to it, they can do more. If the student already knows that content because they've studied it in their human biology, they can move on and go ahead. So it really frees up the environment for students to be genuinely self-paced and to move at a rhythm which suits them as individuals. Now you might be saying to me, well how do you know what they're doing then? And that's where our investment in tracking and analytics comes in. So I'm going to put some uh, images of that tracking and analytics on, onto the screen for you. Um, but what I would suggest to you is have a look at those and realize that actually, although often in education we can be a little bit sort of like data phobic because we've been taught that data is produced by teacher. No, it's not. By teachers. No, it's not. A great educational establishment will provide its data objectively for teachers, for teachers to interact with and act upon in combination with the teacher. I want to repeat that. A good educational provider does not expect its teachers to produce the data, but expects its teachers, much higher level skill, to actually act on the data which has been objectively provided for them. And we do that within our platform and within our services. Now, I'm not saying it's the whole experience of an A-level. The irony is, or a GCSE, the irony is that when you use this kind of technology, what does it do to the classroom? It humanizes it. it the technology humanizes the classroom. And on that basis, what we can say is that um, we can use technology not to be fancy and have iPads in the classroom, not because we want to sort of do window dressing of what the traditional classroom model has been with a bit of technology bolted on. No, we can use technology to completely obliterate the old classroom model and to create something which is truly exciting, novel and new. So on that basis, I'll show you some of the analytics graphics that we have. They're based on a notion of self-pacing. Every graphic in there is based on the concept of mastery. So we only honor for individual students the, the importance of mastering a, a topic area. We never accept that someone works towards a D grade or a C grade or a B grade or even an A grade. Uh, new gradings, of course, coming in. So the only objective is total mastery of skills, knowledge and behavior. And finally, for me, thank you for, for having a look at those. And finally, for me, I just want to uh, offer the the opportunity, really, um, to say, well, first of all, I'm going to show you that little advert, which you may have seen before, that we that we show about how our services can change the classroom. And I don't want to do a sales pitch here. That's not what this is about. We're trying to say that things can be different here. Now, I, I don't necessarily advocate that every teacher in the room should go and start making videos. You, you might democratize your classroom using different types of resources. You might work with us saying, well, okay, that bit's been done, so I'll use that service. And therefore, we have more of a systems theory way of thinking about all the tasks that different teachers are doing across the industry. Um, finally, 
I want to say that w when we make this presentation to you, we, we do it, I hope, in a really caring, uh, collaborative and compassionate way. We want to assist teachers in real and students, actually, we want to assist in realizing what the future of our of our uh, educational model actually is the future is not the past the future is not where we have been previously the future is actually providing services on a systems theory approach which truly honor the ways in which human beings actually learn i have no interest in technology at all i find it utterly tedious and boring however when technology can be the conduit that humanizes the traditional classroom experience, that is a truly inspirational and exciting thing. So that's what we advocate. That's what we endorse. Have a little look at our kind of little animated summary of how this might work. And I thank you for listening to me drone on. Have a great um, teach me. Thank you. And uh, take care of yourselves. The traditional classroom environment doesn't suit everyone. Students that don't fit this pace of learning begin to lose confidence. The problem is, the current learning model has holes in it. Luckily, MyPEExam.org is here to fill these holes. With MyPEExam, students are given the chance to master each subject at a pace that suits them. With 1,500 video tutorials and thousands of automated questions available constantly, students can progress at their own individual pace. And because every interaction is tracked within the site, teachers can review students' progress and gain access to razor-sharp data. Teachers will have more time to engage with small groups and be better informed of where their time and support is needed. With my PE exam, teachers can leave the traditional model behind and become facilitators, coaches and inspirers. There's a reason we have over 40,000 registered students. To learn more, visit our website today.